Hi, my name is Matt Carroll with World Class Coaching. And with the help of Academy Sports Coach, today I want to talk to you about a uh, session um, that was inspired by a book that we have available on the website called um, World Class Coaching Soccer Conditioning. Um, really enjoy this book. Uh, there's no drills where you're just running, 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 running for miles and miles and miles. Um, it's all very much working on the fitness of the players within the context of the game. Uh, the one thing I like, it, it also includes a lot of information about um, plyometrics and dynamic workouts, things like that. So I think sometimes, sometimes especially at the younger levels, you see player, you see coaches get criticized for having, you know, laps and lines and stuff like that. But sometimes you have to train your players in the, the fundamental movements of the game, and that sometimes that's without a ball. Uh, sometimes that is with a dyna dynamic um, uh, stretching uh, warm up, or you know, and that's it looks like a dynamic stretching warm up. But in reality, it's you're, you're working on explosiveness, cuts, um, footwork, things like that, but without a ball. Uh, players have to be able to move make movements, speed guys, go around guys without the ball. Um, they only are going to have for a few moments during the game. Um, so to be able to do those will allow them to then get on the ball more within the game. I think this, uh, this book does a great job of teaching that. So where I have it, I have everything set up on the, the drill we'll do for the entire, the session we'll do for the entire um, uh, video uh, set up right here. But we're going to focus just here in the middle right now for the first drill. The first drill, um, you can set this up with another drill like this going the other way, if you, especially if you have fewer players, maybe you have four goals, depending on the size of your team. The player here, they're doing something. You know, I have I have the ladder. I have them hopping over cones. You can have dribbling cones, something like that. But something where they're physically activated. Um, maybe here the player passes to the end here, goes to the ladder, hops over each cone, and at the end, what they're doing is they've made the movement, they've made the run. They're they're physically a little bit tired at this point, and they're then um, they're then uh, have to go up against a one v one. They immediately then are, you know, hey, you've made the movement, you're tired, can you continue to work technically and make the moves you need to create uh, to win a 1v1 situation? If they win the 1v1 situation, they are then going to score. Um, one way you can do this is maybe if you want them to just get the shots off and at least get that going. Um, maybe the 1v1 is a dummy. Maybe it's a coach just putting the light pressure on, um, trying to get them to react to it. And, you know, maybe it's not crazy amounts of pressure, um, trying to put them to under or anything like that. And then you kind of build up to a true 1v1. So maybe you have the coach in there initially to, to put um, you know, light pressure. Then you switch to a 1v1. And then you have that player that was shooting then runs in and plays the, 1v, uh, the defensive side of the 1v1. So we're activating them to be thinking uh, it's going to be physical. Uh, but it's going to be physical within the context of the game. I'm going to be physical. I'm going to run. I'm going to make movements. I'm going to cut, jump, do these things. But then I'm going to end with getting the ball, getting against a, a defender, going to score. Um, so I think if you just kind of like a lot of people will start their, their conditioning drills, you know, their conditioning days with, you know, they do conditioning at the end or they do conditioning at the beginning. And it's a lot of just running to point A to point B. I think this gets the players to understand the purpose of, Hey, why are we doing conditioning? We're doing conditioning because you need to be able to do these things at hundred percent. So you still can, after you've made the cut, you made the movement, you did this, that, the other thing. Can you beat the guy one v one? So now we move here and I like this, the way they described it. Even more, you know, everyone does rondos. It's always there, for, you know, in every session. Um, wherever you go, you're going to find coaches putting in rondos. Um, but they explained it in the book as like, this is a great conditioning drill, especially for the guys in the middle who are you know, running around um, trying to win the ball. They're, if they're, you know, if they're working, it's going to be very, very tiring. So here we have a 4v2. I think a 4v2 is perfect because it's going to force the guys on the outside to do uh, do a lot of work, a lot of ball movement, a lot of decision making. And the guys in the middle, it's not going to be so challenging that there's too many guys that they'll never, they feel like they'll never win it, so they don't really go that hard. They're waiting for a mistake. Um, it's close enough and tight enough that they you know feel that they can win this ball back if they work. Um, and they still, with two, you have the pressure cover um, uh, uh, idea that you're teaching within it. Okay, um, so. Here we're just going as fast as we can. We're pushing these players in the middle to try to win the ball. Um, we can do it one or two ways. They win the ball. They go to the outside. The player that lost the ball comes in. Uh, just a standard rondo. Or you can make it within 30 seconds. How many times can you get a touch on the ball? And so these players know for 30 seconds they have to go as hard as humanly possible to get the ball to get as many touches to win the, uh, the, the round. And then maybe these two players come in and they switch out for these two players and they go in the, the a team with the most touches on the ball at the end uh wins in some way 
And I think that's a great way to just kind of up the intensity of that, of a very simple and common drill uh, and kind of make it more of a conditioning based drill. So where we move from here is I'll add two more yellow players in the yellow grid. Okay. And now what we'll do is if black wins the ball, if black, or sorry, yellow wins the ball, black is displaced, yellow needs to quickly transition from this grid to the yellow grid, to a player in that grid. And both yellow players move over and two black players move over to then uh, put the pressure on. So we're, we're adding the rondo, we're, you know, it's still the same rondo, but we're adting a transition element to it. So the players quickly need to transition to the grid. And the way we can create intensity in this and conditioning in this is we say, Black has to get over there and get a touch on the ball before yellow can play 10 passes. So if black is slow in the transition, they play the ball over here. Yellow plays five passes before black is in the grid. Black is going to have to do some conditioning, some additional conditioning, Maybe push ups, sit ups, you know, jumping jacks, whatever it is, but some kind of thing um, to, to, to encourage them then to transition that mode. So you've got a really great um, way of, of getting them to move back and forth within a gaming system, but with intensity, very short. I would keep it short. I would keep it short, maybe three minutes and a break. So and explain to the players, listen, go hard for the full three minutes. If you go as hard as possible for three minutes, you know, we're going to get a water break. We're going to stop. You know, I, I, it's not going to be long, but I need you for three minutes. If you want to win this game, you have to go all out. So we've transitioned from there. Let me get rid of all this stuff. We add a third team in. We get rid of the grids. Get rid of our goalie. Here's been for a while. Not going to do it much. And we play in the middle here a game, a 4v4, yellow versus black. Now you can make a keep away. We can add goals in here. If you're looking at making, trying to make it a little more directional now. So let's say we just pop in a couple pug goals here. Or some small goals. And yellow and black are off playing. On the outside, what you have is one person needs to be at each corner at every time in the third team. So this player is here with the ball. Balls out at a red player, red player. Red player. So you have a red player at each corner. And they all have a ball. And they're doing fitness work on the outside. And again, this one should be with a ball or doing some kind of plyometrics and then moving with the ball. So they're always transitioning with the ball. We have a ladder here. We have cones in and out. We have a rebounder where they maybe have to take 10 touches right footed, then 10 touches left footed, cutting in and out with the sticks. And a ball in the middle, black and gold are playing. You can time it. Okay, they're going to play for two minutes. And whoever scores the most is the winner. Uh, and they stay on. You can make it. Someone scores, red immediately then transitions on, whatever you want to do. But whenever they, the game ends, red quickly must transition in here. The losing team must quickly transition out. The outside team is then goes and starts doing the fitness. The inside team immediately then begins to play. So, again, you're getting game-like. You're combining the two concepts of the, the plyometric and the physical work with the in-game uh, play model, and then you're just kind of transitioning that. So quickly transitioning. You're working, you're working, you're working. Now you have to go play. Now you have to apply those things to a um, – methodology so you might just go through and do some quick co uh, cone work with the ball then you're in the game applying immediately that technique um and i think it's a great way of kind of connecting those concepts of we're conditioning but we're conditioning for a specific purpose which is to to play the game um so that's my session uh, i think it's you know there's a lot of things you can do differently with it um but i think it gives you a good baseline of how to develop a um a soccer specific conditioning session um, I'll leave a, uh, you know, in the comments, if you want to, um, add any specific conditioning dreams that you like to play that are fun, uh, but including technical and tactical within it and getting that conditioning work for your squads. If you have any good suggestions, please drop them in the comments on the YouTube video. Uh, my name is Matt Carroll, world-class coaching and with the help of Academy sports coach and the book available, um, that I'll put in the comments, uh, so you can buy it yourself, uh, world-class coaching, soccer conditioning. Uh, I hope this session finds you well.